Hello, welcome to another Daily Digest video. I am Ross Miriam. Today, I am playing a deck from the recent modern classic that is hard to describe. It's a red-green aggro deck, but the cards are all very strange. So, I'm not going to do a whole lot of describing what it is, and I'm just going to play it and hope it goes well. Um, I'm on the play. I think this hand's pretty good. It's a little mana-heavy, but we have a way to sink that mana in Raging Ravine. And Turn 1 Vile is one of the best starts we can have. It also combines very nicely with Eidolon, so we can get spells into play without triggering the Eidolon itself and taking damage. So I'm going to keep. If I was on the draw, it would be a little dicier because I could lose my Vial to an Inquisition or Thoughtseize. But, um, I guess I might as well just get the Grove into play. I can tap it for Colas and pass the turn. See what our opponent is up to. Hopefully they're playing a deck where Eidolon is good. This is a card that sort of put Burn on the map a few years ago and then dwindled in stock until recently with the Rise of Storm. Um, Eidolon used to be particularly good against Infect when that deck was very popular, but after the banning of Gitaxian Probe, it got worse until Storm emerged. Which I guess wasn't that long of a time period. Storm really did start emerging in the uh, about a year ago. It just didn't get super popular until late last summer, into the fall. Windswept Heath. Uh, is this Value Town? Maybe Bant Company? Well, that could be anything. And let's, uh, I guess... Auto yield and say yes this time. Ooh, Smuggler's Copter. I like that one. Um, I think even though Eidolon is really good on the. Ooh, 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 I like Smuggler's Copter a lot. So, like, Eidolon is really good the faster you get it down, but I can get it down with Vial next turn, whereas I can't with the Copter. The one thing is both of my la other lands right now enter the battlefield tapped, so if I play a 2-drop, I'm not guaranteed to be able to Rabble Master next turn. But I think in the matchup like this, Rabble Master isn't that good, and it's particularly good if I get Copter down first, so I can at least crew with a Goblin uh, and not lose it in combat. So I'm going to get the Copter down. Uh, there's no point in me getting a dual land here. My mana is great. I'm pretty sure I should just get a mountain and play a copter. Very strange opening. <laughs> Grove of the Burn Millers of Vile into Mountain Smuggler's Copter. Your turn. Normally you can figure out why your opponent is playing by about turn two in a game of modern, but. I don't think my opponent has that luxury. Misty Rainforest. So that suggests more towards the Bant side. Ooh, is this an even mind sensor? Good thing we got our fetch out of the way. So got a counter on that vial. And Lightning Bolt is not bad. Uh ooh. so I do, I do think I want to just bolt this Hierarch, and I think I want to do it now, because if they have Mind Tensor, they're going to crack their Fetch in response, and then I can Vial in the Eidolon in response and force them to take two. So, and this will stop me from taking two as well. Any responses? This will be great if I get them. Okay, just floating a green. So now I'm going to put a stop in my beginning combat. So I can force him to use this mana first and still while in the Eidolon and crew the Copter. I guess now this stops me from looting into an untapped land to play Rabble Master, but I can just vial in the Rabble Master next turn. Uh, yes. And crew one. So 
So they, I guess they just didn't have a three mana play. I would expect a path then, but they're letting me attack. So if they don't have a three mana play, the Bolting Hierarch is still quite good because it means they're unlikely to have a play next turn. So I'm getting a time walk out of it. And discard a land. Fork Bolt should be good in this matchup. I think they're just getting a tap dual land here and giving saving some time. Okay, so there's Hallowed Fountain. That suggests Bant. Um wonder if they had a spell caller. But if they had a spell caller, I think they would have just quelled the bolt. They wouldn't have just wasted their turn. But who knows? Either way, this has been an excellent start. They're at 13 already. We have more gas coming. Uh, yes, let's get up to three. Ooh. So, let's file here. Get this Ravel Master into play. Now I definitely want the beginning of combat stop. And I don't think I want to attack with Eidolon into a potential Queller, even though they didn't have one last turn. I'm just far enough ahead that I don't think that's necessary, and I'm going to get a bunch of attacks next turn if this Combat Celebrant goes through. But I guess if they have Queller, they're just going to Quell the Celebrant, so maybe I want to throw away the Eidolon to force it through. Eh, probably not. I think if they quell Celebrant, I'll eventually get it back. Another Ravel Master. Maybe I just want to keep that. Or discard this Fork Bolt. Uh, I kind of want to just discard the Fork Bolt. They haven't... Sh I'm sure they have targets for it, but they haven't put one into play. I bet they're going to play a Company next turn. And all these creatures are great. Okay, looks like they're taking three. Good, good. Let's get this combat celebrant onto the battlefield, shall we? I take two, but that's fine. Ten, that's so low. Is this, this is a spell queller? Looks like it if they're getting an untapped land. Surprised they would not play it last turn. Uh, is there no final on trigger here? Oh, there, okay. I just F6, so it appeared very briefly. Okay, well. Could get a little dicey then. Oh, or they could concede. Even better. I was really expecting a company. Okay, Searing Blood seems great. Uh, how good is Pia and Kieran Noir? Mancer and Roast both seem quite good. What cards are bad in combat? Actually, these Eidolons on the draw, I can't imagine, are good. Uh, Triad Militant doesn't seem good. And Scab Clan Berserker, this does not seem like the matchup for that card. Um, instead, I guess I'll bring in the P and Kieran. I think that's better than Thunderbolt Hellkite, which is very vulnerable to Path to Exile. And it's not like they're a Lingering Souls deck. So let's do this six for six swap. Down to a few creatures, but I still have 24. There's only one copter in this deck. Some of these numbers are just out there. Four noble hierarch. I got all these double red cards. Uh, two Tarmogoyf, one Strangaroot Geist, one Ember Hauler. What are these numbers? I I don't understand. But they're just all good cards, so 
I mean, Ember Hauler is kind of underpowered, but it's, it's fine. But all the cards are just good, but I would never think to put them together in this configuration. But we're essentially just shifting into a version of our deck that is best against creatures, because that's what our opponent's presenting. We've brought in essentially six removal spells. Uh, the Searing Bloods especially should be quite good. I guess we've brought in six removal spells and Pia, which is sort of another removal spell. Just all our ways to interact with creatures. There's several ways to get ahead on cards, which is nice. Smuggler's Copter prevents flooding. P and Curing is sort of card advantage as is Huntmaster. Strangler Geist. So I think we can play that kind of game here. Ooh. I like turn one bolt on the draw, but only one land. Probably have to throw this one back. Opponent Mulligan as well. That's nice of them. Uh, another land heavy hand like we had last time. We did draw a bunch of spells last time, which is nice, but oof. I think I'm going to go turn one Hierarch this time because then I can play Vile plus Geist on turn two. Uh, but I'm definitely keeping this. Uh, do not want another Hierarch. I prefer something a little gassier. They scribe to the bottom as well. Uh, looks like their scry doesn't matter. And they have a turn one mana creature, which is bad for us without a removal spell for it. I got a breeding pool. Interesting choice. Not one that I think they usually get. Ooh. Oh, man. <laughs> that changes things. And now, now I'm going to turn one vile so I can Searing Blood on turn two. And then put in the Hierarch. Because I think slowing them down here is very important. Them getting a breeding pool there kind of suggests their land light. Because they have the bird to fix their mana, unless they're really counting on it dying. I would assume most of the time they just get a basic forest, but that, that suggests to me that they only have one other land. At most. Oh no! Pride Mage blow up vial! Ooh, but they don't have another white source. Well, let's... Oh, I'm stupid. I should have played the Grove here. Just wasn't thinking. Now I can't play Stranger Geist next turn. Little autopilot there, but we'll live. I don't really want to give them any life anyway. Okay. Let's see if they have a white source here. The fact that they followed up Breeding Pool with the basic forest. I mean, Pride Mage kind of suggests that they drew that land. Uh, I guess maybe they had Sejuri Step, too. So they're definitely a Knight of the Reliquary deck, then, if they have Sejuri Step. But I suspected that, anyway. And now we drew a Rabble Master, which is just about the perfect draw. So I like that. Going to get to a token in immediately. Next turn, we can play Geist and attack for eight. Might be getting Cocoed, which could be problematic. And I'm not getting at all punished for not playing the Grove on turn two. In fact, I'm getting paid off. Yep. They just I guess they just don't have anything. That's very unlucky. Um, well... I'm going to make them have, oh, actually, maybe I don't play anything pre-combat, because then they can just company into Spellcrawler. I was going to say I want to present the most attackers, so their company is under the most pressure, but letting them get a free Quelder trigger in is probably bad. 
They might have boarded out Queller, but they're on the play, so probably not. It's like a little weak to Bolt, a little ineffective against Vile. And it's still just such a good card. I'm gonna attack with everything here. Might just lose. Uh, might just lose both goblins, but I can't help that. Thirteen. Player collect a company. What? Well. Uh. There's no way they just have three lands in their hand, right? They've got to have a spell crawler and they just really want to get a spell. So there's my worst one. Do I even play the ooze? I don't think I do. I think I'll just pass. Oh, they just let me get a token? Sure. Well. I, I, I've drawn all my basics. <laughs> I was just about to say that. Well, yeah. I've drawn all three of them. So, good job. Hmm. Really surprised they wouldn't just play Queller in combat. Oh, no. No! <laughs> I'm getting so. I guess if I tapped out for use, they would just tap out on the rain phase to exile with the the relevant creatures. Um, <sighs> well, that is a bit of a tilt, but I can play hierarch into Geist and attack for four. Which is a difficult attack for them to block. Uses a good one here for them, but the good news now is I don't have to attack the goblins because the rabble master is gone. Uh, you can have a life. I'm feeling generous. That you weren't expecting, Strangerud Geist. Don't need this stop. Really like to draw some burn spells here. A roast for this ooze would be very nice. There's a lightning bolt going upstairs. Might do the trick. Yeah, go to four. Now they'll go to six on the end step. Make a big ooze. But they don't really have ways to put creatures in the graveyard, their removal spells path. So I don't think this ooze is going to get much bigger. And that means our guys can keep getting in. Can't believe we drew all three basics in the deck. It's not even like I, I fetched them out. Just drew them. Drew them naturally. Just still feel like they have a queller. They were just needlessly conservative with it. And now it doesn't really do anything. Uh now the Royal Party? Kitchen Finks. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, that is horrible. Not only does it gain them a little life here, it also blocks down the Geist, and then when it goes to the graveyard, they can exile it with Ooze, with the Undying trigger on the stack. So I don't really have any attacks here. Can't attack with any Goblin, they just get eaten by the Ooze. If I attack with both, they both get eaten. If I attack with Geist, it trades with half a Finx, and they gain three life. So that's not good. Um, so I've basically been stymied here. 
and I'm going to play a couple of oozes and hope to draw some removal. Kitchen Fix was very good. Second ooze is not a great draw. They're pretty redundant. It will make Knight of the Reliquary small should they draw that. And I guess I can I can actually attack with ooze as a 4-4. That's a fine attack. If I trade with theirs, I have a second to exile the creatures and get big. The Finx is just a chump block. So they have to play something else here. I wish I had Bonfire the Damned in my deck. I would love to draw Bonfire the Damned. But who wouldn't? Okay. Yep, nothing surprising there. Uh, Knight of a Reliquary, okay. Well, that's going to be small. Uh, so let's exile the land. And I can still attack with the news. That, that one might be good. But first things first. Mushu. Two exalted triggers. It's also nice to force the issue on my turn while I have a lot of mana untapped and they don't. So if trades do happen, my remaining ooze will generally be big. You know, this is not going to work out very well for you. And we'll exile that. I imagine they will tap their mana to make me tap one more of mine. And uh, why don't I make the untapped one bigger? That makes sense to me. Probably should have done that in the first place. Yeah, this is exiled, okay. Everything is going according to plan. Sort of. So we've now dealt with the Finx with a minimal damage, so that's nice. Now I'll play uh, this one. And next turn I should have quite the attack. It's possible I still want to slow it down, depending upon what they do. Not sure what the knight is capable of, but it seems like they'll have to block the celebrant if they play some other thing. It's still going to be a difficult attack for them to contain. Could they have a collected company here? That would be that would make my celebrant attack very dangerous. Okay. Well, I like that. So if I go all in with the celebrant, what happens? If they Coco, hit two things, I bolt one of them, they have three blockers, they likely trade one with Celebrant, eat three three ooze with four four ooze, and probably eat two two ooze with something else, and then take four, and then my next attack, they have two blockers for Geist and two goblins, and they go to three, and they, or maybe just go to two and eat both goblins, and that would leave me with a, just a Strangerroot Geist. That does not seem good. <laughs> they would be at two, and maybe I could draw a burn spell, but they'd also have ooze in play. They'd be able to untap and exile a bunch of creatures and get out of burn range. So I don't think that's a good plan. So how about I continue to play it slow and just attack with this ooze? I don't think they can cocoa into anything that eats it. 
it was a 5 5. So I am off. Best they can do is get three lands in the graveyard here, and that's not going to be nearly good enough with the Gooses in play. Uh, they have a path. Tilt. Well, no point in looking at my basic list deck again. Interested to see what exactly they night for here. Pretty sure I should bolt this night though. Um why don't I just bolt it now? Yeah. They were wise to float mana there. So I bolt it now. They fetch in response. Uh, get another basic forest. I remove one of the lands and still have three green mana. Yeah. That seems good. Just trying to figure out who's going to get the counter from for scavenging news. I think they can get it if they really try. Oh no, they're gonna have four. Ah, I forgot about the one floating. Yeah, they're gonna get it. If they get a forest here. Oh, they got a planes because they want to help their mana. Could have an Elspeth, I guess. Um, I'm gonna remove the forest. But now we both have three. What are you doing? Do they actually have a collected company? Ugh. That would be, I don't know, they just have the queller that we thought they had. But now they've, now they've tapped low. Oh no, they're calling the bolt. Why didn't I? <laughs> oh, that's actually gross. Um... Yeah, so they've got that. Uh, in which case, whatever. So now they, so they had Path Queller there. I still, I think that would have made. I guess. Not sure how. Oh, geez. and they get to yeah find the township with night. That is no bueno. No bueno at all. Uh, so let's exile this windswept heath. Uh, Grim is a nice one. How do I attack here? I can't really attack with attack with Geist. I guess they just block with Ooze and activate Township. And then when Undying goes on the stack, they can use a Knight to get another mana. So that attack doesn't do anything. I think I just have to attack with the Celebrant. No exert. So let's get in for six. Do they draw a third path? Oh, uh, okay. Oh, they drew a collected company. That is really good. Jeez. Jeez. Okay, I'm actually kind of 
kind of happy about that. What I didn't want them to do was to bounce my scavenging ooze, trade combat celebrant for selfless spirit, and then get two more counters on their ooze. So I will gladly take that. Now I get to play Grimlava Mancer. I guess I only have two cards in my graveyard. Oh, and they have an ooze. Yeah. So Grim is not nearly as good as I thought it would be when I drew it. <laughs> yeah, I just start gonna hammer my graveyard hmm. if I can get one activation of this grim I'd be pretty happy but that's gonna be tough to do very tough I think now they're going to feel pretty confident just attacking in the air with perfect information. Um, take four. Yeah, they've pretty pretty well turned the corner here. All they're doing is activating Township. They attack for 6 and then 8, which is not a 2-turn clock. So I'm happy about that. <laughs> uh, I don't think Rabble Master is very good. <laughs> um, although I do... Maybe I need to play it and Celebrant, but post-combat. I don't have any good attacks here um, because the ooze is a 5-5 five five, so I'm gonna go to my second main if they've drawn Queller I'd prefer they quell this but I guess they'll have perfect information so I don't think it makes a difference yeah I'm just gonna I think maybe go for a big turn next turn. This might be getting too aggressive because they can just hold back and they have this selfless spirit. So we'll see what's going on. Probably need to draw a removal spell here. Maybe I'm supposed to attack with Celebrant alone and exert. I guess I can't do that because I have this Rabble Master now. They did, though, go for this attack. That is interesting. Because my attack is for a lot. If they only block three things, I might just die. Well... I guess they've drawn a Coco or a Queller. If they block four things, then they certainly live. But I'm going to jam because this is my shot. Not with that one. Um, yeah, I'm just going to jam. Uh, yeah, place triggers on the stack. What do you got? Uh, 
Well, this block here involves them dying, so I kind of like it. So they sack. That's fine. I'm going to make them act first because they're staring down lethal damage. Do they have another path? Is that what they drew? Oh, no, they're just dead. Well, I'm not sure why they made that block. Pretty sure they could have blocked in a way where they lived. Um, but maybe not. I, if they had nothing, then they were just going to die. Like, they have to take at least five from combat, and then I get to Grim Lava Mancer them uh, and fight over all the exiles with ooze. I, actually, I guess they, could, they should have just eaten the ooze and traded for Celebrant and Rabble Master, right? Because then they get to... Uh, then they get to exile everything with their ooze. Um, I guess I would have lava mansered them for two, untapped it. I don't know, the celebrant trigger already happened. I don't know. I'm pretty sure there was a way they could have played where they survived, but they didn't, so that's great. Uh, very strange deck. Not at all sure how it got constructed, but effective, because at, at the end of the day, it was just a pile of good cards, so we were able to leverage those cards, they're all fairly aggressive, and be down our opponent in a fairly close game there, the second one. First game, we, we sort of ran him over with the Copter, which, you know, that card's really good, but second game, we really had to work for it, and got there. So, hope you enjoyed watching that one, and you can come back and see me on Monday. Bye.